Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see, we're going to do something that's just a little bit larger than normal. We're going to do another Sedona, Arizona painting with a large mountain. This time it's going to be in winter. It should be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today up here with a, a two-inch brush and a little bit of blue and white. My palette's actually just setting here on the table, so I can grab it and kind of show you as I go. But this easel's not quite as sturdy as my other one, so I'm probably going to put the palette down quite a bit and hold it, which is fine. It's just my other one doesn't, doesn't like the bigger canvases, so we go with this one. All right, there we go. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of blue kind of where I, where I think the sky might be showing through. Of course, I did a quick pencil sketch as well. It was just a little too big of a canvas to be eyeballing, so there we go. Next, with a very dark gray color, I'm just going to brush in right up here. Some beautiful clouds, some, some darker shadows to the clouds. I've already started with clouds. There, and I'm just going to change the gray as I go along. Maybe this kind of sits right there against the mountain. I think that'd be kind of interesting. So let's do it. There. Good stuff. See how you can just wiggle this in. Look how rough it is. I'm not too worried about it. Because I know we're going to smooth it all out here. I'm doing my best to kind of keep that shape of the mountain in intact because I spent some time putting that in. I don't want to just erase it, get rid of it all together. There. Some variation in color. Very important. It's hard to overdo beautiful variations in color. You can do so many. There. And also, while we're going, while we're going, when you're kind of done with that, I'm going to just take my, my big brush. It could be any of the brushes, really. Any of the larger ones. The blender would be good, except for it would take me a long time. It's a big canvas. There. I'm just going to smooth all this together. It's a little wet, so I may wipe it with a paper towel as well before we highlight. I think we better. Next, I'll take a very beautiful soft gray color made from kind of a little bit of brown and then the mud from the sky, which we kind of had all mixed together there. So it makes a very nice color that does feel like it's kind of, you know, within the same painting as the sky, which I like. You know how I like to do that with the color. So anyway, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to pull down to shape the top of my mountains. The top of the mountain is it only part I'm really concerned with at this point. Nothing else really makes a whole lot of difference. I'm going to do my best, although it may not happen. I'm going to do my best not to come down too far, just because I want to change the brush strokes right about there. This mountain is the feature of the painting, but it's not close. It's not super close, at least. There. Good. I'm trying to go around, see how I kind of stop painting. I'm going over that area. You do not want to leave a little halo around your around your mountain and that's a natural kind of tendency to want to do that so <laughs> we're not going to do that good so you notice how my mountain is just off center there next i'm going to go ahead and just try to cut in a little bit down here along the shoreline this is just just kind of the beginning stages of all this <laughs> kind of just making it look making it look a little more realistic you know cutting in i dropped in a little water so we're going to cut around that right over here. We need some rocks. Now for the most part, not fully, but for the most part, I'm actually going from a photo that Sophie took. It's a very nice picture of the mountain. Basically, it's all it was was the mountain. And it wasn't even, it was winter, but it didn't have snow on it the day we took the photo. So it, we did see snow later that, that trip, which was a lot of fun. But but anyway, so I'm kind of adapting it. This, is, this isn't going to be a replication of the photo in any way. There. I'm going to make a bit of a, yeah, a, bit of a, a rock area here. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop in some beautiful cracks and shadows. Really, what I'm going to do is sculpt our mountain. And I'm doing this, doing this mostly with the darks. There we go. So you just spend a few minutes. This is my little detail round, kind of a worn out one. So you don't want to throw away your brushes just because they're worn out. You want to keep them, see what you can do with them. Different effects. And I'm choosing to use my worn out one for this so that, so that I get a little bit more variation, a little bit less control, which is good for a mountain like this because I want a lot of little cracks in it. 
I'd rather not have to paint each one in one at a time. There, okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. Then we may need to do a little more highlighting, but the darks are more important. So I really wanted to, to make sure that we have the darks established first. Let's take just a few minutes up here and, and turn this mountain into a winter scene. The foreground, we've already started to do that. You see, I dropped in a little bit of what looks like snow, but now it's time for the mountain. There. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Just little touches of color. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> there we go. And this is really pretty. These mountains are so amazing. In Sedona, they, they have little bits of snow in the winter. We did get to see some on them, which was cool. And they just, even when there's fresh snow, they don't tend to have any snow at the top because of the angles. It kind of melts off really quick. And it doesn't stick real well there. So most of the snow is generally found here at the base, which is what we're doing. And then it's very, you know, very patchy. Nice. I love the, the blue and the red working together in the same painting. Isn't that cool? Just touches of color. Next, I'm gonna just tap on a little bit of highlight up here to these, well, these slightly larger trees that I just dropped in. Just took a little dark on the filbert, the other filbert brush and, and brushed them in. I like to have a couple brushes going, obviously. One for light, one for dark, and then I usually have another one standing by for kinda, I don't know, random stuff that I need. Like if I make a mistake and kinda hit that area or blend it or you know, whatever I need to do. There we go. This is kinda just the first coat of paint down on these then we'll want to do several other coats of highlight maybe some snow or brighter light whatever lots of different choices there this is just a nice little backdrop i'm not going crazy with this because i know i'm going to drop a bigger tree over this so you know if this gets a little muddy or if it mixes that's okay it's not really a big deal back here so i'll just spend a couple more seconds on this one and i'll show you that big tree now i'm going to go ahead and just drop in here a little tree and as you know I like to I really like to sketch in thin before I actually go and paint it thick because it's easy to make adjustments should I need to <laughs> there we go nice all right and you're probably looking at the sky I did work on the sky so I had my I was doing my little sketch before I before I got too far and then I looked up at the sky and I thought you know what it's been bugging me all the whole time <laughs> So I thought, yeah, well, I've been looking at it all day. We may as well, may as well go in and add a couple brush strokes. There, it's something I almost never do. I think that's the first time I've done that. I could be wrong, but I certainly don't ever remember going back to paint in more on the sky, but it just looked like it needed it. It was bugging me, so there you go. I put more brush strokes in it, a little more highlight for the most part. I kind of left it a little rougher. I think I smoothed it out too much the first time. So kind of gives you an idea, you know, the things that I do when I, you know, think the painting needs a little help. <laughs> there we go. Make this nice and thick down here. This is one of the features of the painting. Kind of holds your eye in. Makes it a little more interesting on this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work just a little bit more on the water. It was close, but needs a little more life, a little more detail. For starters, I'm going to pull down reflections everywhere I see a rock. There, they don't have to be perfect and you don't even have to really blend them. You can kind of just leave them a little bit rough. Just one stroke down is sometimes all you need. They don't need to be very large because obviously there's not much brown. It's not like we're reflecting a normal rock area. There, instead, we got a lot of snow piled up. So think about the snow as well. There. Do your best not to kind of make mud in this area. Everything's kind of tight. There, and back here, maybe just slide it like this. Good, that kind of gives the indication of a little bit of a reflection. Also can flatten some of that water out. We put the water in real quick, so now we can kind of make it look a little more refined. Now one of the last things we're gonna do up here is just drop in a few little, uh, not dead, but dormant branches. I was gonna say dead branches and it didn't seem right. <laughs> no, the tree's just lost its leaves. You see, maybe the, the stuff in the background, you see there's a lot of stuff that still has its leaves. We may add just a couple of, you know, dormant trees back there as well. But there are a lot of evergreens in that area. 
juniper trees and, and these little bushes and, you know, different things that don't seem to lose their leaves. So, anyway, that kind of represents that good stuff. So when you want to paint an area and you want it to look right and you want it to you know, look like that area, it's good to kind of familiarize yourself. Now, we just got back from a trip to Sedona a few weeks ago. So for me, that's not so hard. We have a lot of wonderful photos. Sophie took some good ones. That's kind of where a lot of this inspiration is coming from. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.